Since their debut album dropped at the start of the new millennium, Animal Collective have earned themselves a passionate cult following within the realm of psychedelia. Known for their eclectic musical influences and wildly experimental style, the four-piece have entranced audiences the world over with their kaleidoscopic music. And without a doubt, the most celebrated of all their works is 2009's Merryweather Post Pavilion. So let's dive down the rabbit hole and into the making of this alluring, colourful album. Following the release of Strawberry Jam in 2007, the band's guitarist, Deacon, decided to leave Animal Collective. Looking for a way to counter the lack of guitar, they started delving deeper into the world of samples, a process that saw them experiment with form and sound more than they ever had before. After months of writing, the band began to search for somebody to wrangle their ideas into something cohesive. They eventually landed on Ben Allen, who'd previously produced Christina Aguilera and Puff Daddy, as well as mixed Niles Barkley's mammoth pop hit, Crazy. They were impressed with Allen's expansive musical expertise and his knowledge of all things bass. Allen's low-end mastery is distinct throughout Merriweather Post Pavilion, as is his knack for pop production. One of his key roles on the album was pushing Animal Collective's druggy obscurity to a wider audience. The next step was to find a suitable studio to record the album, somewhere quiet and secluded. Alan suggested Sweet Tea Studios in Mississippi, and the band immediately fell in love with the quaint space. The studio's Neve 8038 and its whopping 32 inputs was crucial to helping Alan execute the band's expansive vision. Every single instrument could be tracked to its own channel, providing greater control for each element. In terms of composition, the band opted to trigger samples and play their instruments in a live context. And by choosing to forego the sterile perfection of digitally syncing each element, an organic, human-like quality was imparted on their technologically driven music. This also meant they had to use gear with user-friendly interfaces that allowed samples to be played in real time. The Roland SP404, SP555 and Korg Chaos Pad were all used heavily. As for synthesizers, a Roland Juno 60 and SH2 are by far the most prominent instruments on the album. The SH2 is primarily used for crafting bass melodies, while the Juno takes centre stage, from the uplifting chorus of album opener In the Flowers to the creeping square wave melody on Taste. When it came to recording drums, the band delved even further into what the sampler was capable of, recording single hits from an old Gretsch kit and processing them heavily with generous helpings of reverb. These samples would either be overdubbed or recorded using multiple mics to create a thicker wall of sound. Sometimes drums were layered up to eight times. When it came to recording the harmonising vocals of A.V. Tear and Panda Bear, Alan utilised an AKG C12 and a Neumann U47 to capture their performance. As with much of the percussion, vocals were often tracked up to four times to create rich, ethereal harmonies. And, along with almost every other element of the album, the vocals then received a heavy dose of reverb. An Eventide H3000 Ultra Harmonizer is the source of this mesmerizing ambience, a powerful signal processor introduced to the band by Alan, and which they still use to this day. Alan wanted to push the vocals high in the mix, whereas the band wanted them to remain buried. Eventually they found a way to compromise, with vocals taking on various roles throughout the album, from playing a key part on summertime clothes, to being buried under synths on taste. Nonetheless, Alan achieved what he wanted to do, bring Animal Collective's psychedelic concoctions to a wider audience. And it's no surprise that Merryweather Post Pavilion is the band's most beloved record to date. Do you have a favourite track off Merryweather Post Pavilion? Let us know.